Good morning, DCC. Welcome back to another Advent Devo uh, as we walk through the clothing of the King, a study kind of just walking through how all of the mentions of clothing in uh, the Bible point us towards uh, Jesus. It is Saturday, December 9th. I uh, hope you all are enjoying a nice Saturday uh, with your families or uh, doing something fun today. I want to start off today reading a verse from Esther chapter 4. And it says this, when Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. Now, if you uh, have been around church or reading the Bible or, uh, or anything like that for any kind of time, you know kind of some of the outward symbolism of sackcloth and ashes. It's, it's designed to be this kind of sad, uh, kind of grieving uh, thing that you do. But what can sometimes miss uh, our attention is the fact that uh, tearing clothes and sitting in ashes is a public event, not a private one. So why in the world would these ancient Jews do that? Well, when we grieve, sometimes there's this sense that no one else really knows how we feel. Others may know what it feels like to mourn or to feel guilty, but they don't know my guilt as I know it or my grief as I experience. That means that mourning and guilt are sometimes um, uh, compounded by this added burden of kind of feeling lonely or alienated. Um, and so tearing uh, clothes, wearing ashes makes this interior loneliness, this outward invitation. Uh, in mourning the impending doom of his people, for example, Mordecai here creates this space where community can come together and flourish and have solidarity and, the, and, and, and their words, even when they don't have them, are replaced by groans and tears. And His sackcloth and ashes did something else as well. By bringing the people together to share the grief of public mourning uh, as they kind of mourn the injustice of this king's decree who's is going to you know exterminate all the Jews, um, they, they put that decree on trial. Uh, those who are powerless might not be able to um, outstrength governmental might, but they can never let, nevertheless stand up to it and call it out for what it is. That's one of the beautiful things about these shared grief things. It's not just a passive state, but also an active subversion to the more obvious cause of the pain. Mordecai, he's this, uh, he's this pious Jew. And, and as that pious Jew, he knows that he who he worships is greater than any king that he serves. So he refuses to lose hope. Mordecai's hope lies in the God he knows from the Jewish scriptures, but as Christians, we know so much more. We know that our God has taken on flesh and died for us. We know that we're heirs to his promises. We know that he, fully aware of grief and pain, still told us not to worry and that we're never alone. With hope like this, Man, we have something even greater to anticipate that overshadows the hard things which will pass away. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're just so, so, um, we just bring it to you. We bring to you our grief and our pain and our tears. Um, even when we feel alienated or alone or isolated, we know and we can trust uh, in the power and the promises of our Lord Jesus who clothes us in his righteousness. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow again uh, for some more clothing of the king.